Hello, and welcome to your Microbiology Bio 203 video lecture on microbial metabolism. I'm Mr. Kennedy, and I'll be your guide as we explore this topic together. To begin, we need to define two basic terms related to microbial metabolism. They are catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism breaks down complex molecules. Catabolic reactions provide energy and building blocks for anabolism. Catabolic reactions are exergonic. Anabolism uses energy and building blocks to build complex molecules. Anabolic reactions are endergonic. This slide contains a graphic to illustrate the connection between anabolic and catabolic reactions using an intermediate molecule, ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. The energy needed to create ATP from ADP is supplied by catabolic reactions, which release energy. ATP will store this energy and can deliver it to anabolic reactions, as in doing so, it will be recycled to ADP. Metabolic pathways. Metabolic pathways are sequences of enzymatically catalyzed chemical reactions in a cell. Metabolic pathways are determined by enzymes who are encoded for by genes. Collision theory. The collision theory states that chemical reactions occur when atoms, ions, and molecules collide. Atoms, ions, and molecules can collide at random, creating a chemical reaction. Activation energy is the collision energy required for a chemical reaction to occur. The reaction rate is the frequency of collisions containing enough energy to bring about a reaction. Reaction rate can be increased by enzymes or by increasing temperature, pressure, or concentration. Enzymes and chemical reactions. Enzymes are catalysts. Catalysts speed up chemical reactions without being altered themselves. Enzymes are a form of biological catalyst. They are made of protein and they act on a specific substrate and lower the amount of energy needed to start a chemical reaction, also known as, an act, as activation energy. This graph illustrates two reactions proceeding from left to right, one using an enzyme and one without. Here you can see the reaction with an enzyme uses significantly less activation energy and therefore will proceed from left to right at a higher rate. Enzymes and chemical reactions continued. The substrate contacts the enzyme's active site to form an enzyme substrate complex. The substrate is transformed and rearranged into products, which is released from the enzyme. The enzyme is unchanged and can react with other substrates. This is an illustration of the connection between an enzyme and its substrate at the active site. Here you will see the enzyme in green connecting to a substrate in red. Once connected, the connected molecules are referred to as an enzyme substrate complex. The fit between the enzyme and the substrate is not perfect. That means that there is a strain or pressure put on the substrate as it bonds temporarily to the enzyme. That strain causes the substrate to react with less effort or energy required. Once the reaction is complete and the substrate has gone from reactant to product, the enzyme is free to repeat the reaction. Enzymes have specificity for particular substrates. Turnover number is the number of substrate molecules an enzyme converts to a product per second. Generally, enzymes can turn over 1 to 10,000 molecules per second. Naming enzymes. Names of enzymes usually end in ASE. They are grouped based on the reaction they catalyze. Oxidoreductase is an oxidation reduction reaction enzyme. Transferase is an enzyme that transfers functional groups. Hydrolase is a hydrolysis enzyme. Lyase removes 
atoms without hydrolysis. Isomerase rearranges atoms, and ligase joins molecules and uses ATP. Enzyme components. Enzymes have a number of components. The apozyme, which is the protein portion, the cofactor, which is the non-protein component, coenzyme, which is an organic cofactor, and the holoenzyme, which is the apoenzyme plus the cofactor combined. This is an illustration of the components of a holoenzyme. Assisting enzymes or electron carriers. Some enzymes such as NAD, NADP, FAD, and coenzyme A are assist enzymes. They can carry electrons from one place to another. NAD is used in cellular respiration. NADP is used in photosynthesis. FAD is used in cellular respiration. And coenzyme A is used in cellular respiration. Factors influencing enzyme activity. Enzymes are sensitive to temperature and pH. All enzymes have fixed temperatures and pHs that they work best at. Violating the specific temperature and pH that an enzyme works best at can reduce enzyme activity and or lead to denaturization. Substrate concentration is also an issue for enzyme activity. The amount of time an enzyme must spend looking for a substrate uh, impacts the reaction rate. Inhibitors can also influence enzyme activity. Inhibitors can sometimes compete for the same active site on an enzyme, preventing it from doing its work. High temperatures and extreme pH denature proteins. If the concentration of substrate is high, saturation can occur. The enzyme catalyzes at its maximum rate. This is an example of an active protein versus a denatured protein. If, again, temperature or pH levels are outside of expected norms for the enzyme, the enzyme can denature, losing its three-dimensional shape and therefore its ability to catalyze reactions. This graph illustrates an enzyme's reaction to temperature change. Here you can see that as temperature goes up, enzyme reaction rate goes up, but only to a point. Beyond a point of approximately 38 degrees Celsius, reaction activity falls off dramatically as the enzyme denatures. This is an illustration of how an enzyme would respond to pH. Again, you can see that at approximately a pH of 5, the enzyme has the highest activity. Outside of that, reaction activity falls off dramatically. This is a graph of an enzyme's response to substrate concentration. As substrate concentrations increase, so too does enzyme activity. However, you'll notice a flat spot on this graph which indicates saturation. At a fixed point of substrate concentration, the enzyme is working as fast as it can and regardless of any increase in substrate concentration, there will not be an increase in enzyme activity. Inhibitors. Competitive inhibitors fill the active site of an enzyme and compete with the substrate. This is an illustration of competitive inhibition. If an inhibitor arrives at the active site before the substrate that the enzyme normally works with, the substrate will be blocked from interacting with the enzyme and no reaction will occur. Non-competitive in inhibitors. Non-competitive inhibitors interact with another part of the enzyme, known as the allosteric site, rather than the active site in the process called allosteric inhibition. This is an illustration of non-competitive inhibitor. By binding to the allosteric site, the non-competitive inhibitor may alter the shape of the active site, thus preventing the substrate from binding to the enzyme and preventing any form of reaction. Feedback inhibition. The end product of a reaction allosterically inhibits enzymes from earlier in the pathway. This is an illustration of feedback inhibition. 
Feedback can occur in both a positive and negative way. In negative feedback, the final product of a reaction series feeds back and stops its own production as illustrated here. In positive feedback, the opposite would occur. The end product would enhance or increase the production of the final product. Ribozymes. RNA that function as catalysts by cutting and splicing RNA are referred to as ribozymes. Energy production. To begin looking at energy production, we must first examine oxidation reduction reactions. An oxidation reaction removes electrons. A reduction reaction is one where reactants will gain electrons. Put these together and we have what's called a redox reaction, an oxidation reaction paired with a reduction reaction. This is an illustration of oxidation and reduction. In biological systems, electrons and protons are removed at the same time, equivalent to a hydrogen atom. Biological oxidations are often dehydrogenations. This is an illustration of biological oxidation. Generation of ATP. ATP is generated by the phosphorylation of ADP with the input of energy. This is in graphic to illustrate the difference between ATP and ADP and included in this is the energy component. Substrate level phosphorylation. ATP is generated when high energy phosphates are added to ADP to add ATP using enzymatically driven reactions only. Oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation occurs when electrons are transferred from one electron carrier to another in an electron transport chain, creating a chemoosmotic gradient. The chemoosmotic gradient subsequently produces ATP. This is an illustration of a chemoosmotic gradient formed by an electron transport chain as hydrogen ions are pumped from one side of a membrane to the other, the concentration gradient is built. By allowing those hydrogen ions to leak back through the membrane through a specialized structure known as the CF0-CF1 complex, the enzyme ATPase can harness the energy from these moving charged particles to make ATP. Photophosphorylation. Photophosphorylation occurs only in light-trapping photosynthetic cells. Light energy is converted to ATP when the transfer of electrons, oxidation, from chlorophyll pass through a system of carrier molecules. This is an illustration of photophosphorylation. Metabolic pathways of energy production. Metabolic pathways, again, are a series of enzymatically catalyzed chemical reactions. They extract energy from organic compounds and store it in chemical form as ATP. Carbohydrate catabolism. Carbohydrate catabolism is all about the breakdown of carbohydrates to release energy. There are three steps, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain also known as the electron transport system. This is an illustration of the entire process moving from glycolysis through the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain on the left, and in the absence of oxygen, glycolysis through fermentation on the right. Glycolysis is the oxidation of glucose to pyruvic acid and it produces ATP and NADH. In the preparatory stage of glycolysis, two ATP are used to activate a glucose molecule. Glucose is split to form two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This is an illustration that outlines the reactions of glycolysis. Here you can see at the top of, this, of the slide, two ATP are used to activate our glucose. 
Next is the energy conserving stage. After the two glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate molecules are formed, they will be oxidized to two pyruvic acid molecules. In doing so, four ATP are produced and two NADH are produced. Glucose plus two ATP plus two ADP plus two phosphate plus two NAD yields two pyruvic acid, four ATP, and two NADH plus Hs. This is the overall reaction for glycolysis. Overall, the net gain of two molecules of ATP is accomplished in this process for each molecule of glucose that is oxidized. Keep in mind that while four ATP are made, it cost two ATP to start the process. Therefore, the net gain of two ATP. Additional pathways to glycolysis. As alternatives to glycolysis, some cells use the pentose phosphate pathway, which uses pentoses and produces NADPH. It operates simultaneously with glycolysis. The introdeuteroph pathway produces NADPH and ATP and does not involve glycolysis. It only occurs in select organisms, such as the pseudomonas, rhizobium, and agrobacterium. Cellular respiration, also referred to as the citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle. This is the oxidation of molecules that liberates electrons to operate an electron transport chain. The final electron acceptor comes from outside the cell and is organic. ATP is generated by oxidative phosphorylation. The Krebs cycle is the heart of cellular respiration. Pyruvic acid from glycolysis is oxidized and decarboxylated. The resulting two carbon compound attaches to coenzyme A and forms acetyl-CoA and NADH. The oxidation of acetyl-CoA produces NADH, FADH, and ATP. It also liberates carbon dioxide as waste, which becomes the gas multicellular organisms, such as ourselves, exhale. This is an illustration of the Krebs cycle in totality. The electron transport chain is the final step of aerobic respiration. It occurs in the plasma membrane of prokaryotes and the inner mitochondrial membrane of eukaryotes. It is made up of a series of carrier molecules, flavoproteins, cytochromes, and ubiquinones. These molecules are oxidized and reduced as electrons are passed down the chain. Energy is released, and that energy is used to produce ATP by chemoosmosis. This again is an illustration of the electron transport chain. Chemoosmosis. Electrons from NAD pass down the electron transport chain while protons are pumped across the membrane. This establishes a proton gradient. Protons in higher concentration on one side of the membrane diffuse through ATP synthase. This releases energy to synthesize ATP. This is an illustration of the ATP generation step utilizing the electron transport chain. The final electron acceptor in aerobic respiration is molecular oxygen, which is why aerobic organisms require oxygen. This is an illustration of the chemical formula for cellular respiration. Carbohydrate catabolism. Each NAD can be oxidized in the electron transport chain to produce three molecules of ATP. Each FAD can produce two molecules of ATP. Anaerobic respiration. In anaerobic respiration, the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain is not oxygen. Anaerobic respiration yields less energy than aerobic respiration. Here we have a comparison of electron acceptors and their products for anaerobic respiration. This is an illustration of the ATP yield during prokaryotic aerobic respiration 
of one glucose molecule stage by stage. Fermentation. Fermentation releases energy from the oxidation of organic molecules. It does not require oxygen. It does not use the Krebs cycle or electron transport chain. Instead, it uses an organic molecule as the final electron acceptor and produces only small amounts of ATP. This is an illustration of fermentation. Fermentation usually comes in one of two forms, lactic acid fermentation or alcoholic fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation produces lactic acid. Homolactic fermentation produces lactic acid only. Heterolactic fermentation produces lactic acid and other compounds. In fermentation, glucose is oxidized to pyruvic acid, which is then reduced to by NADH. Alcoholic fermentation produces ethanol plus carbon dioxide. Glucose is oxidized to pyruvic acid, the pyruvic acid is converted to acetaldehyde and carbon dioxide. NADH reduces acetaldehyde to ethanol. This is an illustration of the types of fermentation. This is an illustration of the different paths that pyruvic acid can take by organism. And this is a table of some industrial uses for different types of fermentation. This is again a picture of the complete process of respiration and fermentation. Lipid and protein catabolism. Lipid and protein catabolism follows similar routes as carbohydrate catabolism. Protein is broken down through extracellular processes into amino acids. Deamination, decarboxylation, dehydrogenation, and desulfurization can lead to the formation of organic acids, which can then enter into the Krebs cycle. This is an illustration of how lipids can be split into glycerol and fatty acids and then processed through catabolic pathways previously discussed. This is an illustration of the catabolism of various organic food molecules. Biochemical tests and bacterial identification. Biochemical tests identify bacteria by detecting enzymes. Those involved in decarboxylation and dehydrogenation as an example. The fermentation test. In the fermentation test, bacteria that catabolize carbohydrates or proteins produce acids, causing a pH indicator to change color. In the oxidase test, this can identify bacteria that have cytochrome oxidase, like pseudomonids. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis occurs in two stages, the light-dependent reactions, sometimes referred to simply as the light reactions, and the light-independent reactions, sometimes simply referred to as the dark reactions. The light reactions convert light energy into chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADPH. The dark reactions take ATP and NADPH produced in the light reactions and use them to reduce carbon dioxide to sugar through carbon fixation in the Calvin-Benson cycle. There are two types of photosynthesis, oxygenic and anoxygenic, both illustrated in their molecular formulas here. This is an illustration of photophosphorylation, one of two steps needed during the light reaction. Here you can see that chlorophyll will react with or absorb light energy, and as it does so, two electrons are released and picked up by an electron transport chain. That electron transport chain transfers those electrons to an electron carrier. This is the second part of photophosphorylation, which includes what is referred to now in this picture as photosystem 2 in conjunction with photosystem 1. Here again, you can see chlorophyll is absorbing light energy, releasing electrons into an electron transport chain. Those electrons from photosystem 2 are used to produce ATP, while the electrons from photosystem 1 are transferred to an electron carrier in the form of NADPH. This is an illustration of the Calvin-Benson cycle. 
the Calvin Benson cycle uses the ATP and NADPH from the light reactions to produce carbohydrates. Summary of energy production. This table illustrates the requirements of ATP production, the energy sources, the electron carriers, and the final electron acceptors. Metabolic diversity amongst organisms. This table illustrates the broad spectrum of nutritional classification of organisms. Phototrophs use light energy. Photoautotrophs use energy in the Calvin-Benson cycle to fix carbon dioxide to sugar. Again, you can have oxygenic and anoxygenic processes. Phototrophs can also use light energy in this manner. Photoheterotrophs can use organic compounds as sources of carbon. This is a table illustrating photosynthesis compared in selected eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Chemoautotrophs use energy from inorganic chemicals and carbon dioxide as an energy source. Energy is used in the Calvin-Benson cycle to fix carbon dioxide. Chemoheterotrophs use energy and carbon from organic chemicals in this manner. They are medically and economically important. This final slide has the full metabolic diversity amongst organisms. And this concludes our coverage of metabolism for microbes.